Earth Lodge villages, monuments to living in alignment with nature, have provided shelter and security to indigenous peoples in the vast Midwest and North America since the 1500s. Earth Lodges were the dominant dwelling of Central and Northern Great Plains village Indians. Using techniques refined over centuries, these hand-built structures were homes to a range of so-called sedentary tribes, Mandan, Hidatsa, Arikara, now known as the three affiliated tribes, as well as the Omaha, Osage, Pawnee, Kansas, Hawkas, and Oto tribes. By definition, an earth lodge is a semi-subterranean building covered partially or completely with earth. They are usually circular in construction, with a domed roof and a central smoke hole. How did the Plains Indians construct these extraordinary buildings? Understanding these construction techniques will require blowing the structure apart, layer by layer, to help discover the engineering secrets developed over the years. The most complete account of Earth Lodge construction is found in the Gilbert Wilson monograph, The Hidatsa Earth Lodge, published in 1934. Gilbert Livingston Wilson was an American ethnographer who, with his brother, recorded the lives of Buffalo Bird Woman and her family. Wilson recorded the process of building an earth lodge and made detailed measurements. These records were later published by the American Museum of Natural History. This unparalleled effort by Gilbert Wilson has preserved essential details of earth lodge construction without which the depiction would not have been possible. The first step in some tribes is to dig a shallow circular pit. The sod is cut into small squares and set aside for later. To start, the four center posts are raised. Then the main central support beams are put into place, followed by the perimeter posts with the secondary beams laid across them. Once the exterior frame is complete, Lean to puncheons, which are short posts, are placed against it, with the upper end cut even with the top of the frame. Roughly 80 to 100 rafters are laid next and raised from the inside of a lodge. Willows are then used to fill in the chinks between the lean to puncheons, laid parallel and cut the preceding summer so they would be dry when needed. Willows are also laid transversely over the rafters and cover the entire roof. A matting of dry grass, about six inches thick, is then added to the roof. Next, a row of forked sticks are set against the outside of the lodge and poles are laid in them to create a railing. Sod cut into approximately four inch squares is laid over the dried grass with the roots upturned and then pounded into place with rough sticks. Sod is also added to the exterior wall. To smooth the earth on the lodge, the sides are wet and plastered down by hand. A covered entrance is added after the exterior is complete. It consists of two fork posts followed by roof poles and then puncheons that are sunk into trenches and filled in. For 40 years or more, these engineering marvels could stand in extreme Great Plains conditions. They remain a distinctive type of timber frame house unique to the central and northern Great Plains village Indians. <laughs>